welcome to the pod for the first time ever. My Wait, this is this is your first podcast ever? This I, I'm I'm your first guest ever. Oh. It's an honor. All right, do your do your intro. Chanel Perillo. <laughs> Shut up Chanel and do your intro. Hi. Hey guys, my name is Chanel Perillo and I'm a casting director and producer based in Los Angeles. I've cast shows like Drag Race, F Boy Island, The Real Housewives franchise, A Million Dollar Listing, to name a few. I want to welcome you to Shut Up Chanel, a podcast where I take you through my LGBTQIA plus journey, while each week I get to chat with the queer royalty that helped shape me. Buckle up, because I know you're going to want to tell me to shut up. In my 30-something years of living, no, this is my first podcast, you're my first guest, and it makes sense because you are one of the first queens that entered that entered my life that really like changed me, I think. Um, and so I would like to welcome to the pod the first episode, my first guest, my sister, my family, RuPaul's Drag Race extraordinaire, musician, artist. Graphic. Oh God, get to get to my name, girl. <laughs> Shut up, Chanel. Get to my name. Vanilla Lazan, welcome to Shut Up Chanel. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm super excited for you and I'm most excited for your listener, your, your one listener, your mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. You know, with starting this pod, I really did try to like think like who would listen to this? Like, who's my target audience? <laughs> I feel like majority of my followers throughout the years have been drag race fans that have seen me kind of grow up with you girls um, and always kind of been like, what does she do or who is she? Um, I feel like I've been mentioned on like Willem's podcast, all these like different things. And people are like, who the fuck is this girl? So I figured like might as well um, start start a podcast because I can't shut up. You can't shut up. I mean, honestly, like your nickname is Shut Up Chanel. It's your Instagram handle, Shut Up Chanel. It's because you can't shut up. <laughs> and we like that because like a lot of us, we just need to have, you know, ambient noise around us. And if we're going to have ambient noise, it might as well be coming from like a beautiful waterfall or, a, you know, a, a, a cloudy storm like thundering in the background or a beautiful big breasted gorgeous woman like Chanel Perillo, right? <laughs> I feel like there is like a little bit of a story behind Shut Up Chanel, but I want to start at the beginning of our relationship, our friendship, uh, whatever, however it began. I want to get your perspective and starting by just asking how we met. Well, we met on set um, of RuPaul's Drag Race on season three and we were filming in Culver City. And um, the drag queens were put in a hotel near the airport. Uh, it, it was like a boutique hotel. So it wasn't like a like a like a best western. Don't get it, don't get it wrong. Um, <laughs> drag race made a nice little uh, you know, a little like deal with like a nice boutique hotel. <laughs> very boutique it was like one of those hotels where like people are staying there or just like in LA for the night kind of yeah, uh because it was by the airport it was close to the airport which mm -hmm. meant that it was like, like cheap but it was like they were trying to like give you an experience the problem with boutique hotels that I've realized is is that like boutique hotels um they trade off a lot of the amenities that hotels have for cute design which means an, like a different color paint than like you know your your regular radisson wallpaper you know what i mean but that just what that just meant that there wasn't like a mini fridge in the room there wasn't like um it, there wasn't like the the regular like an iron all of the queens we kind of we kind of like a, you know occupied the top floor of this hotel and on the top floor they had like this lounge Mm -hmm. that everyone in the hotel could use but because we were staying there for an extended period of time because drag race a season of drag race films over several weeks um we kind of laid claim to it as our own and we would have um dinners there we would kind of like hang out on our off days um 
It's like the one place that all the queens like could hang out together if there was someone there that could like monitor them from talking about show related stuff. And huh? that person was Chanel Barilla. <laughs> like, did we have we had iPhones, right? We did have iPhones, um, but you know, there wasn't took- Instagram. It was like Facebook. That was it. Like, I I remember that because I remember like wanting you guys to add me on Facebook. <laughs> Um, which we did, unfortunately, for us. <laughs> it took a while. I remember I begged Raja for a whole year to add me. And she kept being like, girl, like, I have too many friends. I have to delete some and then I could add you. And every time we would hang out, I would be like, so can you add me on Facebook? Or Well, yeah, because that, that was so long ago. Um, that was like coming off the heels of MySpace where you could have as many friends as you wanted Mm -hmm. um, versus Facebook, which only allowed you 5,000 friends on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of us drag queens, once we thought we were becoming famous, like we would just accept any friends thinking it was similar (laughs) to MySpace, but then we would cap out at 5,000 friends. And then when we'd actually want to like be friends with someone on Facebook, we would have to be like, oh, I have to like delete some rando that I've never met, you know, that's like following my yeah. Facebook page. No, drag um, did teach me that. Like, I, I remember in the beginning, I was just saying, saying yes. Like, I, it was like, oh, I met you out last night. Yes, we're friends. Oh, like, you oh, think beautiful? Yes, we're friends. Like, yeah. it, the more the merrier. And because I thought like, I MySpace. Bring yeah. it back to like where we both were because it was like you, there wasn't much to compare drag race to. You had like probably had oh. a couple sisters on season one and two. Like, like you didn't really have much to, to like gauge it off of. I mean, even like bringing looks and stuff was so different, you know? Like you like packed up your like actual drag that you had hanging in your closet. You weren't like getting yeah. things or getting or have the money to even like create the things that you had going on in your well current 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 seasons they don't have the money either but like you know (laughs) it it is it was a it was it was a time when the the runway uh the runway categories were simpler like sparkle or (laughs) pink you know what i mean or like you know your best drag Like that was the category. And so a lot of us queens were relying on stuff that we already had in our closets. Um, But our season, we were making a lot of clothes because, you know, in earlier seasons, Drag Race was kind of like a mashup of like all the reality TV shows at the time. I remember on season two, they had like a, a fear factor challenge where the where the queens had to eat disgusting things while blindfolded or something like that, you know, Um. So we had a lot of like uh, photo shoots on our season. We mm-hmm. had a lot of, like like top model or we had like a lot of make your own costumes like Project Runway, um, which is which is which is great. And I think that's one of the reasons why I, I think I did did so well on my first seasons because I'm, I'm really crafty with stuff. Um, but I think that the production realized like, you know, the queens will actually pay thousands and thousands of dollars each just to wear a costume of their own and that'll save production thousands and thousands of dollars of buying materials for these queens to use you know from the dollar store i started out as a pa on drag race oh yeah that was where we're going to until we tangent off shut up chanel on episode um immediately after episode three two uh, two or three, I want to say it was three, episode three had finished. Um, and I, that was like right after like the, the infamous untucked Mimi I'm first. You'll never be glamped. Ooh, just cause you got a sugar daddy who pays everything for you. Oh. Come out, hold on, hold on, sweetheart. Let's get it together before you want to read. I don't have a sugar daddy, sweetheart. Everything that I've had, I've worked for. And I worked for to get, and I've built myself. So I need you to know that 100%. I don't have a sugar daddy. I've never had a sugar daddy. If I wanted a sugar daddy, yes, I probably could go ahead and get one because I am what? Sickening. You could never have a sugar daddy because you are not that kind of girl. Baby, everything I've had, I've worked for, and I've gotten myself. I've built myself to the ground. I'm not your bitch. Getting splashed in the face with uh, Shangela's drink, you know, uh, that whole, like, that whole sugar daddy, you know, confrontation. <laughs> Immediately after that fight, we were all told that production had to halt for an uh, an indefinite amount of time. And we were all sent home. 
because they were like, we're not, we don't know how long production is going to need to wait. So we're not paying for these queens to stay in this hotel. Go mm-hmm. home. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy. Like that day, I remember being like, is dr- I just fell in love with this show. Like all these people, it was like, we didn't know. But all I knew is I told them like, I want to come back regardless how long the break is. And if anyone leaves the talent department, like I'd really like to be in talent. Like even when I was a PA, like I would find like any excuse to like go by the Queens, like by the workroom or I'd be, you know, sneaking in the hair room to like talk. Uh, massage. It was like, I wanted to be around talent. That's where I felt alive. I felt like I would be useful to talent because I feel like I'm really good at like um, anticipating what talent needs which I think is a skill to have. Well, and- it's because you, because you're a diva. Like you 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 weren't a full flow a full fledged diva like you are now, but you were the buddings of a diva. And honestly, that's why we all got along with you. So I don't actually remember a lot of interactions with you on the, those first few weeks. Um, but is that because you were like you were like what like wrapping up like extension cords instead of like tying up corsets like what, what, what were you what was your job before then production coordinator that was like how I got in I I met someone I I literally like the story is crazy but like cliff notes I was gonna like move like the recession hit LA there wasn't even fucking hostessing jobs I graduated from fashion school there was no fashion jobs in 2006 in LA that paid anything um like there wasn't even hostessing jobs like I remember like being like god I can't believe you just graduated fashion school and you're gonna go be a hostess so I was gonna move home to San Diego and then my friend Ricky that lived here at the time like he was always like Chanel don't give up like come to this dinner tonight there's this production coordinator I feel like you guys will get along and maybe you could like PA and I was like okay like I've always loved TV I've been fascinated by it like it all makes sense now like now that the story has like has gone but at the time like none of it was making sense and I was breaking up with a boyfriend so it was like all these like this toxic relationship so it was like I'm and then I met this coordinator 24 hours goes by one night after I met her and I get like a call the next day and she was like we're starting this new show it's a spinoff of RuPaul's show Drag Race like have you heard of that and I was like I've heard of RuPaul but like, I, and I've seen the promos. I remember like, I'll never forget the commercial, the first RuPaul's Drag Race commercial. Cause I remember seeing that on TV. And I was like, that sounds like cool, you know? And and so she was like, okay, be it's like, it's called Drag You. Um, you just be handling all the drag queens. She's like, you just need to like bring them sodas and like take care of them. I remember calling my mom right after and being like, they want me to like take care of drag queens. And my mom was like, oh fuck. Like she knew. I did. She was like, oh, yeah. ready. She was for like, the, your life's going to change. And I was like, for those of you, for those of you who don't know, don't know Chanel's mother, my, my, your mother is, your mother is drag queen adjacent. Thank you, doll. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's in, it's in the blood and everything makes sense now. Like, I mean, I performed It's Raining Men for the talent show in fifth grade in a sequin gown. And like, no one thought that was weird. <laughs> I mean, it isn't weird, but I mean, if you're a drag queen. In fifth grade, so like the parents must have been like, how does she know this song? Um, but yeah, it all made sense. My parents were like disco queens. So it like, it just made sense. Um, and then ever, and then that first day on set, I was just like, like upset. I was like, how did I not know what drag was? And then it became, I think for a lot of girls. And that's why I think like, they know that like that first time they see a drag queen, it's like, it's this feeling of like, I don't know. I was so confused. I was like there, I had so many emotions. Like I like wanted to be them. I was attracted to them. I wanted their comp, like their confidence. I think that's another thing. Like a lot of women see, see themselves in Queens is like uh, the confidence that they always wish they had, you know, that I don't give a fuck, even if it's, even if it's, if it's an act, you know what I mean? It's, it's this confidence that like, we all kind of wish we had and this like ability to just not give a fuck what other people think. And I honestly, well, the, for the thing is, is that like, it, it always, it, it also affects like other people. It's not just girls because I had the same reaction for seeing my very first drag queen as well so not to steer off topic but like 
I remember seeing my very first drag drag show and I was just like, yes, I want to do that. I want to be that. I want that confidence. I want that glamour. I want to have that power to like walk, go out on stage and like that, that kind of thing. So yeah, drag is definitely inspiring. And so like, that's, I guess what brought us together, like your fascination with drag, my fascination with drag. And then the fact that we were sequestered <laughs> together for weeks on end. Sequestered. I would I would get to the hotel to pick up the queens at seven at six thirty seven a.m. I would have to make if not earlier. I would have to make sure that they got fed, got in the van. Then we would travel to set. Um, and during that time, you're dealing with a lot of personalities. Some people are morning people. Some people aren't morning people. Some be, you know what I mean. Some and of us have multiple personalities. All of day on set together for some of like sometimes we wouldn't leave there till midnight. Um, it's also feeding these, these grown, grown humans, like, grown, feeding, like their children grown, again. Grown. You're going to say grown men, but that does not cover all of us. So I, yes, thank you for pausing. <laughs> and you, and you had to deal with a lot of diva attitudes because like, honestly, like on that kind of, t uh, on the show, a lot of us drag queens, like the, the, we felt that this was our big break. You know what I mean? Like this was this was getting us the attention because before Drag Race came along, like it was very, very difficult for a drag queen to be on a main mainstream show other than like maybe like a background character or a one off episode or or whatever. So this was a big deal. And we and we kind of we kind of knew that it was going to launch our 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 ourselves into like a big career. So like we were taking this very seriously, but we were also like not getting enough sleep. We were under tons and tons of pressure. We were getting kicked off like one by one. Um, we production was like this this uh, like entity that we didn't see, and the only people that we really got to interact with were uh, the the PAs and our handlers. You being the most memorable of them. <laughs> oh. I love that. I love it so much. You were there. You were compassionate. Um, and because you were you were kind of in the trenches with us, like you were in the workroom, um, you were always standing by. You were there to take care of us. Like we had to ask permission to go to the bathroom. And like it would be you or one of the other handlers that would, you know, facilitate us. Like, you know, we'd have to ask you, you'd have to go get permission. We'd have to like clear it. And then we, and then we would have time to like take us to the bathroom. Um, you, you would take us onto smoke breaks. Yeah. That's you know I, mean? I think me being a smoker during that time, like really, really gave me the in with the queen because queen during that time, especially during that, it's so different now um my life anyway but but like I was smoking in parliament every five minutes back then yeah I didn't even smoke and I took up smoking just so that I could have an excuse to leave the set and have like a little moment where the cameras weren't on where I didn't have to worry about like people listening in on my microphone where I could like literally just like get off and like breathe fresh air and mm -hmm. you were you were there I would no. lovingly yeah, now you vape. Okay, well, that's much worse for your health than, than smoking cigarettes. Um, so everyone that's, this is not, we're not endorsing cigarette smoking or vaping, like, no, we're quit not. now. We're not, don't do any of that. Okay, but like, um, you were always there and you were always, um, you, I would, we would lovingly refer to you as our Mary Poppins because you were, you had an authority over us, um, but you, you never, you never used it in like um like a power in a, in a power way you know what I mean like, like it was always for in your best interest is how like I looked at it you know and that might have even gotten me into some trouble like and and but I was young you know like it was all a learning experience like all of, like that was my first tv show my first it was all like a string of first for me it was the I like I had said in like um before I got the show like Everything just, it was like, I was breaking, I got out of a toxic relationship. So I was in this, like, I was in this place where I was like anti-straight men. Like, it was like, I got dropped into this like drag, like castle with like no straight men. There was no straight men on set. And the ones that are were like the hot, like, you know, like tech guys that I could like flirt with. But like, 
there was like none of that. Like I did, I didn't have to deal with any of that. And I kind of just gone out of like my Hollywood party girl stage where I was like over that part. I was like, I had done it all, which I'm kind of going back to now, which is funny, but so girl, girl, you, you, you have a, a, a you have a, a toxic relationship. I, I probably was like, you didn't go to the straight clubs anymore, but you know, very soon after we will be dragging you to all the gay clubs. Yeah, so it went from like me being obsessed with like ho- straight, like young Hollywood to me being like, okay, well now I want to make West Hollywood like, like my bitch. <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> and you did girl. And you did. Like, we won, all, like, we all made West awards. Hollywood. Our- <laughs> I won like, you can't even say it like F F hag of the, of the year award. Like, and that was another thing is like kind of define redefining, redefining like, the the best Judy of it all you know what I mean like I didn't know that I didn't even realize that like gay guys always had like a best girlfriend like I didn't know any of it I will tell you the day I'll tell you the the day I fell in love with you I'll never forget I was I still wasn't that close with you guys yet because we hadn't gotten like a dark weekend where I got to like really get to know you but um it was the it was the space challenge I'll never forget, like, you were the monkey. And yes, it was, was the cutest monkey I'd ever seen in my life. And you were so cute and funny. And I just remember being, like, to, like, one of the, like, guys, like, I love Manila. Like, I just was, like, I love Manila. And then the more that me and you got to talk, like, I don't know, me and you got really close. I think it's because we're both Leos. Yes. We yes. both uh, like to talk about ourselves. Uh, of course. Sometimes we like to talk at, about ourselves at the same time. <laughs> When we first started after the show wrapped, like I, I was like, I need more Manila. So we would like call each other and like, I would go to the gym and just let Manila talk my ear off for like two hours, like two and a half hours. We talk, I don't talk to anyone like that anymore. <laughs> no, neither do I like a real relationship. with well, That was, that was when I was living in New York city still. And you were uh, out here in LA. And so, yeah, like we, we didn't get to like hang out with me because we were spending almost all of our time together when we were filming the show and like when we were filming that show, it, it's such an important and memorable point in our lives. Like I'll never forget that. Um, and thank you for falling in love with my tweaker, the space monkey character. That was the one. That was the one. And there's been so many since then. I mean, Manila is like every, like Sharon needles used to say it. Like if you were in Alaska, if you look up the definition of drag in the dictionary, like you see a picture of Manila Lazan, because you really do like incorporate like everything that everybody loves about drag. Like you're well, not except want- for dancing, <laughs> except for dancing, but like, you- not def- I'm not doing no jump splits no more, no more no, ever. <laughs> no, but like you're everything, like camp glamour, like it's just so real. And I also think like. Has anyone ever asked you how it how it feels that like you've never won? Well, I mean, it, see, going on that show is like I, I knew going on the show I had what it takes to go to the end and possibly win every single time that I went and competed on the show. I mean, it, it was surprising. Uh, it's surprising to compete with girls who like are just happy to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why did you even go on the show if you just like if your if your only goal was to like be on TV so you could go back to your local bar and ask for a $50 raise. Like, um, but no, I mean, it doesn't really matter because like the experience and the opportunities that it gives is like worth way more than the prize money. One of the best parts about the show is that I didn't, I didn't expect was the friendships that would make um, and the experiences like of just being on a, a TV show was gonna have for me. Um, which is which is greater than any like you know, at that time it was like a hundred and fifty dollar rhinestone crown oh, that they could just buy from downtown LA. Yeah, <laughs> like you really did walk so other queens could run is how I look at it. Because I mean, I just think even the word. I mean, I know drag queens have been saying sister forever, but like just drag queens saying sister on a TV show like completely changed the whole like the whole community. You know what yeah, I mean? Because. because- I don't- it was like there was like 10 sisters and it was like we're the sisters and then and now it's 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 the world the world it's the world yeah the world. like there's so many especially because now there's like all these different franchises so like i'm like oh i, I guess this is my spanish drag sister 
I don't even speak fucking Dutch, but this is my freaking uh, drag race sister from fucking Holland. You know what I mean? Getting people used to be like Chanel collects drag queens. Like it was, I remember it being like a rumor. I'd be like, Chanel's gonna collect you. And like then it, it like I'm good. I've collected enough. I never wanted to collect them all. I, I just wanted to collect, you know, a, a solid handful, a Marco Marco show full of drag queens. That's all I ever wanted. But well, yeah, I mean, I we've just been through so much together, it like boggles my mind. I mean, yeah. you've taken me around the world. We've been to Australia, I think, twice together. I once for sure. Um, where we toured the whole country. Once. We went to Australia once. Yeah. Um, that was also a lot of fun because like once once the show was over and we got to tour, you know, like and sometimes when we go out of the country, I'm like, I don't want to leave by myself. So I, I, I invited you. It's like we started the bring your drag queen handler on tour with you moment we really did there first of all like the queen you were one of the first queens to start traveling the world from the show yeah and it was of the star of drag queen management before like it was like diana cooney was the drag queen manager and that was it it was like dirty diana and like this one agency in la but you were kind of at the brink of like drag queen management of touring the world, um, of of creating singles from the show. I mean, you really did. You pioneered a lot for future Drag Race girls. Oh, well, thank you. It was I- my honor and my duty. I mean, it feels great. Like, I, I mean, making, uh, traveling the world, like, especially with, when someone's paying you to travel, it, it's great because you don't have to pay for the flights, you don't have to pay for the hotels. Like, they kind mm-hmm. of like, plan the trip for you in in most cases Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's very brief you know what I mean like it's it's cool to get to travel especially well mostly on on someone else's well getting paid to do it actually that's what's great um yeah because you get to meet fans from all over the world and like season three um it was still like you know like when I would go to some countries like they didn't even have drag race available there. Like people, like I would get to um, a sold out, you know, show in like Brazil, 2000 people, like a fucking sold out balcony seats and stuff like that, standing room only. And then realizing that like everyone there watched my show illegally on a torrent site. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I mean, in some countries there, and it's probably still, but I remember like kids would come to like Marco's studio and be like, we watch Drag Race and we have to watch it underground because it's like illegal to watch. Yeah. What I mean, it's all over the world. It's really, I mean, I remember having to explain to my friends what drag was and then them not getting it and me having like, are they cross dressers are there? And now they're all like asking me what the tea is. And it makes me like sick to my stomach sometimes because I'm like, I remember like defending my, my people, like my people to you. I, yeah, it's just, it's really changed a lot since you and I first met. Yes. And it, it's created a lot of, like being on drag race has created a lot of like other opportunities. Like you were saying when you were doing, uh, when you were casting Marco Marco's show, you know what I mean? Like that really helped launch Marco Marco's underwear line, which is now like world, world known selling out all over the place. Every mm-hmm. go-go dancer in the world and every like homosexual man that wants sexy underwear has Marco Marco. And it's partly in, part because of you and putting to and helping Marco Marco put together his very first fashion show all those years ago. Well, and, and that like that it's, that was, I was leaving drag race um, because I chose the road. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, really? Oh, is that what happened? Like you were like, I'm not gonna, we're going to get to that on like not episode one. When I just did drag me to dinner. So I also, I just cast Manila in that Drag Me to Dinner series on Hulu. And I remember like the last day, um, all the like producers and stuff, they were like, you know, everyone told us that like, you're like close with the Queens, but like, we didn't know you were like family with them. And I was like. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's, it's also really makes me proud that um, we were able to share in your very first like ever 
um, you casting a show by yourself, you being the lead casting director for a show. Because like you had known so many queens from being on Drag Race that when they started like casting the next seasons, <laughs> Drag Race would start asking you like, uh, who, who, who are the good who, who are the good queens? Because still, like in those early days, um, the there casting was, the I casting am. directors didn't really know, they didn't really know how to cast drag queens just quite yet. Still, well, there was an Instagram. You had to go to drag shows, and it was like the after my first day on RuPaul's Drag Race and Drag You, it was like I was like I got to see more of this, like because I just seen them on the show and I didn't even know what lip syncing was. I was like. Like, I didn't know any of it. Like, I really? was like, like, see what the fuck these people, I remember like Raven one day being like, come to Mickey's on Monday night. It's really fun. And I remember being like, is it? And like, then for like five years after that, I spent like every Monday at Mickey's. Same. <laughs> Going backstage. That used to be my favorite thing to do. Like get ready in my little apartment by myself. Like just get like, wear whatever I want. Cause I'm going out in WeHo. So I don't have to like impress straight men. And I would like just go out to WeHo by myself and just like run around. And I didn't know anyone. All I knew were the drag queens. But like that. But we we know everyone. Way to so go because could... then everyone wanted to be my friend because they're yeah. like, who's this girlfriend's a raven? I think like number one tip I've learned is to make yourself irreplaceable in one way or another. Like have a skill that you know that you are the best at and and hone on that because yeah you are really replaceable anyone like if someone you know what i mean um yeah especially at those lower levels of pa and and like the whatever the, the higher you get in the ranks you have to be an exact i even think now as i'm like entering my later 30s i feel like a little bit i i knew this day would come where i would start to feel a little bit more respected but it's still i mean i sometimes still feel like that 21 year old that's like trying to prove herself well, yeah because because we still don't respect you <laughs> <laughs> that's why we always tell you to shut the fuck up <laughs> no i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> I know I was going to end it there, but I will. I do want to say one more thing. The, the shut up Chanel really did happen because when they, oh, I was, I was. So, Let me think about how I want to praise it. So when the Queens are on set, when, when anyone's on a reality show and the cameras are like down for lunch or like taking a break, they call it on ice because what if Manila and I had this amazing conversation at lunch and it wasn't on camera. And then we bring it up again on camera and there's no setup for it. So it's just a way to like, try to keep things like accurate of like what's really going on. So I was like, okay, well, like, is it okay if like, I just talk their ear off? And they were like, as long as they're not talking, <laughs> I like asked this to the, <laughs> yeah, we had to shut up. We like, it was the weirdest thing ever because like when the cameras turned off, like of, of course, like they don't want us to get into a fight because if we get into a fight and then we, it, it shows up on the runway and there's no context. It exactly what like, you're saying. Even a bonding moment. Like you might've bonded hard at lunch because you had this deep combo and then we yeah. missed it. The cameras <laughs> weren't on. So like what RuPaul says that the camera's on, it doesn't exist. If the cameras aren't on, we're filming a TV show. Uh, so that would be strict and you are one of the people that was enforcing it you were like we you can't talk you just say all i all i you would look at it at the point and we, we'd be like oh, we can't talk um so you know we would whatever so you would be just the one talking mm -hmm. yeah because i i like got i was like because they were always listening that's another thing it was like they're you guys are mic, so I knew that people were always listening in the control room. And so, like, I wanted to be careful, too, what I talked about, because I was like, these people, like, are totally judging me, first of all. Like, I was like, let me just tell them cool stories about my parents in the 80s. So I would tell you guys so many stories about my mom and dad. And, like, I remember, like, Raja was, and you one day were just like, I really can't hear about your mom anymore. I understand, honey. So every time I would start to like talk, you guys would know it was to shut you off and you would be like, shut up, shut up. And I realized that people had been telling me to shut up my whole life, like since I was probably a baby. And you, 
Guys taught me that if you, and I learned this through drag, that if you own something that you are insecure about, then you take away its power. <laughs> I'm taking away the power of people telling me to shut up. Yeah, like when people when people want to call me, like when, when, when they want to say I'm gay, and it's like a derogatory thing. I'm like, well, I own that I'm gay. So like, that's not really hurting my feelings. I'm not trying to hide that from anybody. Um, if you want to, if you want to like call me, like say Meek, I lost RuPaul's Drag Race so many times. And like, you want to call me Manila loser. Like, that's fine because I already know that. Fuck, I lived it. So like, go ahead, like call me whatever you want. Own that part of you uh, uh, for your own. Like one of like the things like when Alaska was on All Stars 2 and, you know, they called her a snake and then she like wrote a song about it. She had snake costumes. She owns the title snake. So it's just like one of those things where, yeah, it, you take the power for yourself. So uh, if you beat people to the punchline, uh, you own that. And Girl, you own Shut Up Chanel because, girl, you you don't stop talking. You 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 still talking right now. <laughs> you can't hear her right now, but her mouth's moving. You know, I'm on. Part of me is doing this because I am a I'm a casting uh, director now, an accredited casting director, and I do these. An interviews. acclaimed, an acclaimed casting director. Mm -hmm. You know, I love storytelling other people's stories. I love connecting with other people, but. So many times I, I muted in the interviews because I, I just want it to be about them. But so this is my fucking opportunity. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This Talk is the friend and not be muted, you know? <laughs> Hold on, let me just put you on mute right now. <laughs> Honestly, um, my computer's gonna die. So I'm this is my first pod. I obviously wasn't prepared. Um, no, we've been talking an hour. This was so fun. Um I feel like I learned more about our relationship than I than I start than when we started. Aw. Um, I love you. I'm super proud of you for for doing this podcast. I encourage everyone to subscribe to Shut Up Chanel. Um and turn that notification bell. I don't know how this fucking shit works. Um, so that you can keep up to date. I hope that you have some amazing guests on all of your episodes i would love to come back we could love to kiki we have there's so yeah, many stories got, that we like, could talk about yeah i feel like we like got like the uh, the how we met we set the stage like i feel but, like but barely girl like we could go on about the time when we got our nails done on our day off we could talk about the times we were at the pool together we could talk about some of the times that you got in trouble from some of the queens with production. There are so many stories that uh, you have with us drag queens. And that's just the stories that I know because I know that you were working um, with Drag Race, with the queens on Drag You on several seasons of Drag Race. After that, you've cast so many fashion shows with Marco Marco. You're continuing to cast all these different shows that like have nothing to do with drag, but are probably just as like, interesting and have their own fan bases. So I'm excited to hear more from your podcast. She wouldn't be here without you, darling. I really wouldn't. You really gave me the confidence I needed during that time in my life. You gave me a job. Like, you hired me to tour with you. You know what I mean? Like, you really, you believed in me. You were one of the first drag queens to believe in me. And so I will always be your biggest fan. Um, and... That's it. I've also been in a lot of your music videos. We should do a little montage at the end of this. <laughs> Hot couture. Oh, no, there'll be beeps in here. I think the okay. episode is over. I don't want my computer to die and lose this, so All I'm right. going to get off. I, I love, love you. you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. I love you. Be sure you're subscribing to my daughter's podcast. Oh, is this thing on? Sorry, I'm on my way to the hairdresser. Just know there's all kind of content coming your way. Not just episodes, but new graphics, new socials, and updates to how we're going to be structuring the episode. I'm looking forward to sharing all of that with you. And I am a very, very proud fake podcast mom. And if you see Chanel, please remember to tell her to shut up.